Hello and welcome to episode number one of Talking Kit, which is essentially a podcast for football kit fanatics made by free football kit fanatics. We'll be bringing you our sideways glance on football attire and hopefully bring you some chuckles along the way. We're going to give you a rundown of the podcast in a second, but first we'd like to introduce ourselves and tell you why we're football kit nerds. I'm so happy we got that done in one tape, boys, you know what I mean? Oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> professionals so yeah um you may have seen from the little intro we had uh, i am aaron yeah and james sean at the bottom well for me <laughs> sure. it is for me yes. it is you are it is, it is for all of us mate don't worry you're very much at the bottom uh so yeah we are all football kit fanatics we are all cousins uh brought together um and we decided one day why not make a podcast about something that we're quite fanatical about yeah i think um Obviously, football kits, retro kits, very popular, the in thing at the moment. But I think our take on things as well will be slightly different to that, even more so. Uh, talking squad numbers, certain colours, perhaps goalkeepers in trousers, that sort of thing. I'm sure we'll be discussing throughout all that, all the uh, shows. Without a doubt. So yeah, a little bit. Um, so talking kit has really been three years in the making. Um, Something me and James came up with. Well, I had a dream weirdly enough about making a podcast not a wet dream just a dream about making a podcast around something i really like football kits uh and i mean me and you did a pilot didn't we james um yeah for, for a little a little youtube thing in our in our apartment um, yeah when we lived together back in the day a few years ago now yeah 2018 was that uh on a little gopro um i really enjoyed that pilot i thought it was good um, you know what, it's been that long ago. i almost forgot about that pilot but it was it was a good little show weren't it it was it was very clever the ideas were good the features were pretty good some that we've carried on now to this amalgamation um of talking kit like i say it's been like three years um sean's jumped on board because he's got nothing else better to do spare wheel. <laughs> i think with sean on board people will quickly establish why we brought him on board he's um yeah he will be the uh the gem i think out of this whole thing don't put because I'll just disappoint. <laughs> but you, 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 you said you said we'll take a sideways glance, but with Sean, it's probably a backwards glance. To be fair, on everything. Backwards is my well, forwards, um, by the way. Is what? Backwards, backwards is your is forwards. My forwards. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, um, I'll start. So I'm a you know big massive United fan, season ticket holder. I've been for uh, several years now. Um, Brazil fan, recent England fan. <laughs> oh yeah, since the win against Germany. Now before that, the Scotland nil nil drew me right in. Lads, I had to come back for that nil nil. Um, but no, yeah, I just a man about football kits and wanted to do something fun, so I could talk to to my best mates about football kits every week or every two weeks, whichever we, we decide to do. Mm. But you, what about you, James? Uh, Manchester United fan. As our family, I mean, as all three of us were at one point, and I'm sure Sean will explain that uh, shortly. Oh, but yeah, uh, big United fan. Not got a season ticket, but um, yeah, perhaps in the future. Um, still very much glazes out, so we shall see. But um, I, I've watched and supported England throughout the whole tournament. Aaron's very recently got on the bandwagon with that, um, which I'm sure, again, we'll go into a little bit later on. Apparently, he wasn't an England fan. And in the WhatsApp groups was giving it your team, your team, your team. And suddenly it's <laughs> and he is a big fan. So that's uh, interesting. But um, no, I think for me, with kits and stuff like that, I think my main thing, and I mentioned it before, would be like squad numbers and what looks good on a player. If someone signs a player, one of the first things I always look for is the squad number, what number they're going to take and so on. Um, so yeah, that's, that's very much always been something that I've been uh, interested in. I've Sean, never, I've never been, a, I've never been a United fan in my heart. What? Pardon? Listen, Should I say that I've, again? I've never been a United fan. I've, I've followed them out of fear. Um, Aaron. <coughs> what? No. no Aaron. That, Aaron that ruled, ruled the, fam, the family with fear, like almost <laughs> like Hitler Youth or something. Hitler uh, Youth. I, I was. Yeah. I was, I, sorry, mate. I was in the Hitler under twelves, not Hitler Youth. Never got to the youth. Never got to the youth development. I, I, I don't that one, for one second. So Sean's a goalkeeper and he grew up sort of idolising Peter Schmeichel. 
Yeah. Uh, and there's plenty of pictures of him, world. which I'm sure we will get for later episodes, of him wearing Manchester United uh, football kit. Oh, so he wasn't forced into it. Funny. Well, there's pictures of okay. Prince Harry wearing a Nazi uniform. And... <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? Again, I don't think he was forced into that either. Um, but yeah, I'm a Stockport County, Stockport County fan, through and through. Um, followed them since <laughs> 95. Um, what year was you born? 86. But obviously... Through, through, through and through was, then, yeah. I was compass mentis when I was like five, so... <laughs> There's an argument to be made you still that now, to be fair, sure. It's like midlife Alzheimer's, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, Stockport, like, the first game I went to was Stockport against Peterborough, nil-nil shit game but do you know when you find a love for a team and it just grips hold of you and it like pulls you in a bit like the Mafia that, 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 that's... the Stockport County Mafia yeah actually who, Mafia who would have been the Tony Soprano of the t- of the, that time that era Sean um, probably probably Luis Cavaco because of his Latin roots <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> was, he was he a coach? Portuguese, Portuguese winger. Um, right, okay. Did all right, actually. Um, then there was Kieran Durkin, who's dead now. Died about three or four years ago. Quite young. Okay, keep it light, but okay. You're so, going to introduce your tag kick to everyone, Sean. Um, he yeah, was that's... asleep. He, he was asleep, but got my resident dog in the living room. He keeps popping his head up. Nelson, Nelson, is he Nelson he's called, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Pretty sure yeah, he's a Southampton fan. Don't know if you can hear man snoring next to us. Papa going for it. Dixon, Papa snoring. I thought that was him. I thought he yawned. <laughs> well, can you hear it? I, I heard it, yeah. I heard it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that is us. Um, so, we decided to get an episode out quick. We would Because we thought, why not do it during the Euros? That's the best way to do it, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, go it for the Euros. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm putting a pillow on his face. Oh, okay. We'll move on swiftly. Um, yeah. So, at the time of recording, it is the Sunday after England have progressed to the semi finals of the European Championships. Uh, great 4 0 win from Southgate and the boys. Uh, how are you feeling today, J- uh, James and Sean? You, you was on it, Sean, last night. Well, happy. Um, I don't remember anything past the 15th minute, which I'm annoyed at. Um, I remember Harry Kane's goal, but I'm, I'm isolating because of I've been in contact with someone with COVID. I'm negative, by the way, but because I've got fuck all to do, I've just been drinking. I had probably the best part of 15 bottles of San Miguel yesterday. Um, I can't remember anything past half eight, so I had to watch oh. the highlights this, this morning. Lovely. Um, did you go for a haircut last night as well some t- at some point? Um, <laughs> I went uh, well this morning. Went to the toilet. I realised I'm bald downstairs. So I, must, <laughs> I must have shaved myself last night after the game. Notice I needed a trim. I'm like, where the fuck are they gone? <laughs> I do some things well, when I'm drunk, which I don't remember. I what a weird way to celebrate. I walked the dog as well about ten past midnight, which I don't remember. Cooked myself some food. Um. And yeah, Three I had a, a, a bath and a shave. <laughs> I also played that game. I, can't, I don't know if you can see it. What angle is it? I've got a scar on my head anyway. I played a game my toy with, with the dog and the dog won. I got oh, a scratch down his face. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to do if you get to the final? I dread to think. Celebrate the win. Perhaps shave I the game. Gave him- Hopefully, we, one day we get we get sponsored by Manscaped. You'll be laughing all the way to the bank. Right? Oh, yeah, I like, I like Manscaped. I've always wanted, wanted to um, try them out. Because they don't nick you, these, apparently. And especially when you've had a few beers. I, I've got a few red marks. Be right up your street. Yeah, be right <laughs> up your street, won't it? Um, okay. So, James, what about yourself? Uh, well, I thought I had a good night until I've heard about Sean's, but uh, much more subdued. Um, watched it with a couple of friends. Um, yeah, it was all right, really. I was in the loo for the second goal, and I thought they were doing that thing, you know, where they cheer to make you rush out of the toilet. Ah. Or like, oh, my God, we've scored. Um, which I didn't, I, well, I sort of, did it work on me, I suppose, if I didn't rush or anything and came out, I was like, oh, I've actually missed the second goal. But no, it was a, it was a good result overall. 
the thing is with this England team, we try not to get carried well, I'm trying not to get carried away, but we're yet to see them struggle. Obviously, they've not conceded yet. No. So there's never been that, oh, will they get back into the game? They scored very early yesterday, just seemed to, you know, settle the nerves and make it much easier for everyone. So, yeah, yeah. it was a good result. All I can see is a win um, in the final. With I- Denmark are not a problem. Do you not think? I think they might obviously they'll play. I'm gonna call it now. I'm gonna call it now. Three nil. Three nil England Denmark. Against Denmark. Mm-hmm. And then you got it. Italy or Spain, you do you think, in the final? Uh don't matter. I'd rather get the Italians in the final. That'd be a good win. I think I think it'll be the harder game of the two. I think it'd be a better final, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh do so you call you called four nil last night, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I had to check my WhatsApp group because obviously I can't remember it. Um, <laughs> and someone said, "Oh, I called the four 0 and it four 0 did, did you put a bet on? No, I don't bet. I don't bet on teams I support. It's just bad in it. Can't bet on England. Can't bet on Stockport. Well, um, so yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed it last night. I watched it on my own, but not. I didn't have as much fun as Sean. I was stuck in work. Um, no, it's good. And it, as you can probably tell, that's so why I do support Brazil. Much to uh, James's annoyance, but I think it's just—it's not the fact I just fallen out of love with England over the years. But a lot, this team, a lot really, of League fans have, to be honest. My audio's gone. Ah, it's all right, I'm back. Um, more so, Man United fans. Uh, a lot of Man United fans just don't really support England, and I kind of fell into that trap. But say this team in this. Um, in this tournament, because they're just sort of like most England teams, you just don't like them very much. Oh, I haven't, but I find them really easy to like. Even players from other teams, there's not that rivalry in it. They all seem to get on. They're all mates, and it's just yeah. it's quite enjoyable to what follow England now. I think rather than it has been for many many years. So it's Southgate. I'll, he's brought everyone back. Well, you could say it's him, yeah. But and it's I'll admit, I'm it's fully it's jumping on the bandwagon, lads. Fully jumping on the bandwagon. I'm. It's coming on. It's coming on. Southgate is, um, he's not like strangely charismatic as a person, but he does seem to have settled on his squad, which works. The, the, the interesting thing for me is the squad depth. He's not even really used Foden or Grealish, pro- like, you know, constantly. Um, obviously, Saka was in and out of the team. Sancho only played last night. Rashford, I know he's had his injuries, but he's not really in a team and he normally would be with Southgate. Yeah. So, so many other players who've perhaps missed out on playing regularly in the tournament. And um, still, still in the semi final in the last four. So, so even see. even say so even Mount not really got much of a game. Um, played the first, did he played the first one, first two, and then he was out for a little bit. And then COVID, yeah, so he missed two games, did he? Something. Yeah, yeah. I so must, you know, he's, that, he's had a bit of a rest. I must admit, pre tournament, I was, I didn't want to see Pitford as the number one, but I'm quite happy with him at the minute. He's, he's done all right. To be fair, he's done all right. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Nelson just put me off. I can smell something. Ignore it. <laughs> it's the 15-year-old scarf, probably. It smells like oh, hamburger, right. ham- hamburgers and old football. Of course, of course. Um, so moving away from England, talking about the Euros in general, how have you both felt the tournament's been? Have you enjoyed it overall, the entertainment, or how have you felt? I think it's um, it's been a really good tournament to watch. Um, I, love, I love tournament football, end of. Yeah, yeah. Southern France was a highlight for me. It's a really good game. Um, there's been a lot of really good games, quite open play in a lot of the fixtures as well. So there was a day where there was two games and I was off work. I watched them both and I was like, this is the best day to have. I think it was the Spain Switzerland game. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, was it that one? Which one that went to penalties and Switzerland won? Oh, no, it was a France Switzerland. France. Yeah. And the game before it, Spain and Croatia, I think it was. Yeah, they were yeah. the two best games, and I was like, so glad they had that day off. It was a good day of football. Great day of football, James. You've enjoyed it. Yeah, obviously. Sean mentioned the Spain game. We've had the goalkeeping howlers from Dubravka and is it Simon? Yeah, uh, Spanish yeah. goalkeeper. So it's had it all, hasn't it? It's had red cards. VAR's not been overly used. Um, it's been good. Um, a couple of upsets in there. Obviously, you've got Italy. Sort of you. Done well, typically you'd expect. Germany didn't really get going, did they? Um, no. But no, it's been really. good. It's been good to watch. Um, and I was a little bit. I didn't really like the idea of third place going through. 
but I think it does offer something a little bit different in the later stages. Yeah, so. I think I think extending it and having that extra round, obviously it belongs to the tournament, which is great for people who, who love tournament football like us. But just that that extra bit of edge to it, and a, you know, a bit more, a bit more excitement and a bit more drama, it's, it's amazing. I, I've I've found it one of the best Euros for a long, long time. I don't think I've enjoyed the Euros this much, probably since got, 2004. I'd say we've got two English refs as well. I've noticed. That was yeah, good. my Oliver like though. Shite. That red card he did the other day. Shocking. Couldn't wait to get the red card out. It was quite Useless quick ref. from his back Useless. pocket. One thing I've noticed about this tournament as well, I don't know if it's the ball, but there's so many shots that are going straight at the keeper. So many. But what Most games, don't know what it is. I think Sancho had one the other night, last night, right down the keeper, and he could have gone anywhere. He had so much time and space. I don't know what it is, but every single game I seem to notice. I think I was watching this Spain game, um, Switzerland, Spain Switzerland the other day, and like that Moreno could have had three or four goals, but he, every time he was in the keeper, right down the middle of the goal. Um, it's just one one little thing I've picked up on. Yeah, he's he's blown very hot and cold, hasn't he? Really, because he's missed a penalty, um, sort of in in the normal ninety minutes, but he did tuck one away in the penalty shootout against Switzerland. Then he has missed some sitters as well. So that was a great pen. Uh, one thing about Spain, the hair must be pulling his hair out, thinking how how, how am I not over this, Simon? Like even the yeah. up and down season he's had, he still should be number one for Spain. I've, I've never even heard of him. Is he from Real Betis, the goalkeeper? No, is it not Bill Bow? I'll have to look it up. Simon, but yeah, yeah, he's not looked spectacular that goalkeeper. To be honest, and it'd be interesting to see what they see in. Well, we'll never see what they see in training, but what De Gea is doing differently. I know, obviously, Henderson had a few starts towards the end of the season for United over him, but he did come back into it. So, yeah, 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 yeah. He's the Bill Bow keeper. Um, so, I mean, not not better than De Gea. No chance for me. But, um, so you're both back in England to bring it on then, boys? Talking the, Euro- the Euros? I think we'll definitely make the final. I'll make that statement. <laughs> Even though, the, obviously, the advantage is that we're at Wembley for the final. But Italy or Spain, tough ask. Anything can happen in that 90 minutes plus. So I would like to say so. Again, the, um, you know, the pessimist in me thinks it is England and... They might choke, but I'd like to think that we will bring it home, yeah. And uh, it'd be nice for Badil and Skinner to, you know, have a third release of the song. I don't know quite how they change the lyrics to It's Finally Come Home or something, but yeah. Yeah. No doubt they'll have a stab at it if they do. Maybe you should have, maybe you should have a go and then next episode to see what you've come up with. That'd be nice. I'm calling what? England win after extra time. In the final? Yeah. England, Italy, okay. it'll be. Okay. Yeah, I think England will beat Denmark. I think Italy will beat Spain. Um, I, I, I've been impressed most with Italy in the tournament just because of the way they played in the group stage. But when you look at England's performances and a lot of people who struggled against Croatia and the Czech Republic, it kind of made England's performances against them look even better. Um, you know, keep clean sheets and, and obviously um, winning. So... It, England could do it. I think it actually could be coming on, boys. And I think, you know, us as lifelong England fans, mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, <laughs> can rejoice. Do you know what I mean? I've got an England shirt, James. Leave me alone. Yeah. Um, um, interesting as well. The World Cup's not too far away as well. So yeah. if they can win it, can they do what Spain and other com- countries have done where you sort of kill a double? And, and do the double, yeah. I, I not, think that's the, tre- I mean, the team's going to get better. Spain did the treble, didn't they? Didn't they win the Euros, World Cup, and then Euros? Yeah, they did back-to-back Euros, yeah. 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 Uh, as well as the World Cup in between. Um, but, that, yeah, you think that England team's only going to get better? A lot of young players, you know, not not many over... Any over 30 at all? I can't think... There, I don't think there is, is there? Maybe Kyle Walker. Walker. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and there's plenty of right-backs to come in his space. So, uh, it must be an exciting time for England fans. Let's bring I'm it up. excited. You should be. Taking me back um, to Euro 96 now. I was that excited at Euro 96. Yeah, it was a good, that was a great, great, great tournament. Wembley great semi-final point. to look forward to. I know someone who's going to the semi-final Wednesday. Oh. Someone's got some tickets. Well done to him. 
Sean, you yeah. managed to get a ticket for alone in the tournament. How was that? Uh, I was, it was probably the brilliant. worst game for England so far. It was the worst game of the tournament, probably. But it was England Scotland game. I was so grateful to get the ticket. Um, the whole day before, the hours before were brilliant. So glad I was pissed because the game was shocking. Um, it was. Afterwards, had a few beers. That's what it's about. And underneath the um, in the concourse before the game, lots of singing, lots of bit of banter between us and the Scots. Yeah, it was good. Just a we, terrible game. So it's your first game back since uh, COVID and stuff. Like I went to the last United game um, against Fulham. Did, did you find it a really weird experience? Obviously, that actually no. capacity and no, it was like no, no, it was quite seamless to be honest. Um, it was like the only thing you had to do was obviously wear your mask before you got in the stadium, but no one had it on afterwards. No, and no, no one was no. social distancing. No, um, no, obviously everyone had to provide a negative COVID test before. So yeah, we, didn't have, we didn't have to do that for for Old Trafford. We didn't have to do that. The only thing that's weird is obviously you have to get there at a certain time. Like you have entrance times and it won't let you in otherwise and the queuing up's a bit longer. Well, yeah, um, we, had, we had a specific check-in to check-in, let me say. Well, we could, we had to go in between six and half past, obviously because of like social distancing. But me being drunk and ordering the Uber, all I did was type in Wembley, not Wembley Stadium. So the Uber driver, he... Um, did he not know the knowledge, Sean? He, he obviously, <laughs> like we all had England shirts on, he didn't make... He didn't put two and two together. I think, oh, they mean Wembley Stadium. Took us to Wembley, which is two miles outside. And it was a Friday at rush hour. It took us like an hour and a half. We nearly missed our um, check-in time. But luckily, yeah. it was like, um, we sort of like said, this way we need to go. We're not on the way there. And he sort of like took a few back streets. Uh, tipped him a quid. That's all he had on me. Generous. I know. You can do, you can do it um, through your phone to do more than oh, a quid. I know, I know, but you threw a pound. You didn't actually do it on the app. No, I had a little, I had a quid in my pocket. No, oh, you're so generous. In it's London, in London, that's about twenty p. That that's nothing. <laughs> it means nothing. Well, it maybe I'll get, that. maybe I'll get in touch now and say, listen, I owe you some money. He took you to the wrong place, so no, forget him. He didn't clock on you all had England shirts on and wanted to get to the stadium, clearly. That was my bad. He he was he had his job sheet, he was doing what he needed to do. I saw the app like four miles away. I'm like, I swear I need to be going. And he's like, <laughs> Oh, you're at your destination now. And it was like a spa or a, like a mini mart. I'm like, Oh, I've fucked up here, boys. Sorry. <laughs> so he had, it was nearly my fault, but, but it was my fault. Yeah, it, it definitely was. Um, so we'll conclude on the Euros then, boys. So score out of um, out of ten for the tournament so far. It's got to be a ten from me. It's been it's been great. I've really really enjoyed. Like I say, even some of the, the smaller games, if you like, with the less less bigger teams. Obviously, the Czech Republic Scotland game didn't disappoint with the uh, fifty yard strike from Schick, stuff like that. It's been a really good tournament. I think we'll look back on it in a few years and and be grateful. <coughs> Has been uh, a big success. Definitely. I'm not going to go as high as ten, but I like eight, maybe. Eight. Okay. Eight. What, still got what, three. Would, what would make it a ten for you? England we winning got, it? Or? Well, yeah, obviously we got three games to go as well. Um, that's some good drama. I mean, it's better than the last one when we got beat by Iceland and some dull games there. That was a Hodgson Gary Neville stewardship. Era. Yeah. Aaron, from you. So far, I'd give it. I'd give it an eight, and I think obviously it get to a ten. I think obviously England win it, uh, and the buzz that you can see so far. Um, see the scenes from Manchester last night uh, in the middle of um, the Northern Quarter. It was like massive crowd dancing. Someone, someone brought an ironing board, I believe. Um, oh, I saw that with, with DJ, I, I, with DJ thing. Uh, John, John, just turn your telly off, mate. Can you hear it? No, you, you keep it? watching it. Oh, I didn't know. I was watching it. I'll turn it off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably concentrate on us, mate. Not the bloody TV. Fuck's sake. Um, but, yeah. I, so, someone had an ironing board in the middle of town. No dancing. Uh, singing. Uh, I've seen a video from is it Box Park in London that I've been showing the games. Don't know if you've seen it. Atomic Kitten was singing the uh, Southgate song as well. Oh, yeah. I saw that. 
Obviously, Storms went back to a fan's house as well, didn't they? Oh, I seen that. Seen that. Yeah, I seen that. And do you know what? I feel like the Euros has come at the perfect time for lockdown ending, and like, and it's just like a big had a buzz around the whole country, and everyone's come together and sort of like just try trying to enjoy life again after having a, a shit year or so. Mm-hmm. I think it's quite about time, especially with England doing well. You know, it's just made it all, all the better, hasn't it? I guess so. Long may it continue, and I hope, I hope they do get to the final and uh, potentially win it. It'd be good. I'm mean, looking forward to it. Yeah, so that was us talking about the Euros. Obviously, England play it, Wednesday night, eight o'clock um, against Denmark. Go on, we'll get some quick predictions, Jen James. What you're saying on the Denmark game? I would like to say another clean sheet for England. I want to say 2-0. I think Sterling will get back on the score sheet and we'll go for Harry Kane. I did say 2-0 Sterling Kane for the Ukraine fixture, but I think that'll be it for Denmark. I think Denmark a little bit tougher than Ukraine, but should yeah. be a win. Sure. I, can, I can see a 3-0 win. Um, a mistake by Kaspar Schmeichel at the second goal. Kaspar. I think Harry Kane... Grealish is a second. He's going to come off, uh, come on as a sub. Grealish second goal and Kyle Walker thunderbolt. There's a little insight <laughs> into Sean there. Cash for Michael with an error. Yeah, just little things yeah. like that people pick up on as we do these more and more. That Sean yeah. is just his predictions have to include, you know, what the goal scorer's boots are made of and what mould he's yeah. got on and stuff. I like have to have intricate details and everything. Come to say three now. I need, I, need, I, need, I need to say these, shot. I need to say these things in case it happens. Like oh, when, Bus- okay. when Busquets missed that penalty, I was literally typing, "Busquets will miss. He's going to hit the post." I thought, "I'm not going to say that." And he hit the post. Coach, yeah. And if I'd have sent that, I'd have looked. Yeah. Balls. Is that the same to when you you was a kid and you played in that final and pretended to to save a penalty even though you got nowhere near it and hit the post? Is it similar to that? <laughs> uh, they're all tr- truths so <laughs> yeah that's fair okay I'll go for an England win I'll probably say it might be a bit closer like a I don't know 2-1 2-0 yeah. Possibly. It'd be, it'd be, I reckon the 3-0 will flatter us like it'll be close yeah. but we'll score like yeah. in the 81st and 88th minute or something in the last two so specific alright <laughs> right, so we'll score two in the last 10 minutes is that better no. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, come on in then, England. Um, you're watching Talking Kit. And uh, yeah, that's how you're a chat. So we're uh, Talking Kit. So obviously, like I said, we are doing a Euro special this week, uh, or the first episode. Uh, jump right in there for all them views, them Euro views. Uh, but we do have some like features lined up, which I bloody love. Uh, um, I think we're quite proud of them. So one of them is obviously being a, a football kit show. Uh, we're going to rate kits every now and again. Um, and it's called, it's, called, it's called Kit Simons, isn't it? There's nothing other to say other than Kit Simons, really. Um, former Fulham player, uh, Welsh international. Our younger um, listeners won't know who he is, will they? Uh, just Google him. Go and have a look. But it works. It's actually... called Kit. We're quite disappointed actually because he's actually from London. Uh, we were hoping he would have a really strong, thick Welsh accent because he did play for them internationally, but it turns out he doesn't. But yeah, the <laughs> idea being it's out of five Kit Simons, is it? That's what we rate kits. If five, ten's too much. Five's, five's the perfect number. Yeah, rather than stars, we're just rating it off Kit Simons mainly because his name's Kit. Yeah, we'll probably put his face up along the screen in future episodes, I reckon. Um, so sticking on the Euro theme, which the whole episode will be. Um, we decided to do our favourite Euro 2020 kits. Um, so, what what kits have stood out for you so far? Should we start with you, Sean? What kits have stood out for you so far? Um, well, the first one, uh, we played against in the last round, the round before Ukraine. Germany's away kit, all, the all Love. black. Yeah. Um, I think I've mentioned that in a previous, like, Pilot episode. Podcast. Yeah, pilot episode, that's the one. And um it's just classy, isn't it? It's like yeah, it's tight. There's different shades of black and grey on there. Nothing you like, you like, you like them tight, do you, Sean? Like the shirts tights on the boys. 
Uh, well, I, I, I like it. It emphasizes <laughs> there. It looks neater, doesn't it? Like when it hugs, doesn't when it, it hugs yeah. the muscles and stuff. Right, it's okay. all floppy. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a great kit. Simple. I'd wear that anywhere. Yeah. So that's been your kit of the tournament so far. So far, yeah. Yeah. Uh, James? Nothing's really stood out for me in terms of a kit for the tournament. Obviously, you'll see behind me there the Dutch kit. It's always nice to see an orange kit there. Um, quite like the look of um, the Italy kit. It's quite nice. But have they you, have they wore the green yet? This tournament is that is that their away no. kit? Are they got the green no. or is it white? The white's the away kit with that weird puma um, template. That has the name in the middle with the two lines. Um, I think is the green the third, I believe. Yeah, I do like that. Obviously, yeah. they won it in this tournament, so you can't really include it. But I think the Germany, like you say, on previous pilot episodes, we have mentioned it because Dortmund did something similar with like a blackout kit. Um, yeah. And that one is nice, as, 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 as much as we hate to admit that as an England fan. The Germany away kit is a, is a good kit. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, Italy's, I love Italy kits. I think they're always classy. They always look nice. That shade of blue. Um, and this one in particular is really nice with the sort I've of pattern got, in it. Sorry, I've got that as my number two. Yeah. Um, I really like the England kit. I like the font. People were keen on the font, but I like the sort of lion, lion's main font. I think that works quite well on that kit. Um, yeah, grown on me, definitely. Really, from that really decent yeah. kit. I'm not, not a fan of the away. Tired, Sean. I was just trying to get a little bit of oxygen there. Sorry, um, it's, quite, it's quite a muggy room. Is it? The, the uh, blue, yeah, and I'm, I'm hung over as well. Oh, of course, and you got no oh. pubes. That, that's killer. Um. So the kit <laughs> with the red font, you're not a fan of. I'm not a fan of the blue away shirt. No, of England. No, not not massively. Um, I like that the the Dutch the Dutch away the black. I like that one. That's nice. Even though it looks a bit like a polo shirt, that is quite nice. Um, but no, I think there's been quite a few. The the France home, France away, both nice shirts. Um, Finland's, been, Finland's been... reminds me of Inter Milan's. Have you seen Finland's? It's got like a blue cross over the crest. Wait, there's the oh, crest. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice shirt. The away one was quite nice as well, the, the blue. That was quite nice. Um, Denmark and Hummel always work well together. Um that home shirt's quite nice. Um, so I think it's been it's, been, it's going to have been a good tournament for kits. Uh, I think there's been some standout ones for me personally. Uh, looking at them, uh, your audio is gone. I keep doing that. Uh, if I had to want to buy with my own money, I'd say Italy definitely. Um, mm, yeah, I've got that. Actually, Belgium home. I don't like that. I'm not a fan at all. I don't like the. Um, it's got the stripes. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Not a fan of that at all. I think it's one of the worst ones they've had for a while for me. Um, no. So uh, if we go through, then so Sean, your um, your Germany kit. If that's your favourite, how many uh, kit Simons you giving that? Five kit Simons. Ooh. Full marks, nice. Yeah, I like that German. Oh, full mm. marks, full Deutsch marks. <laughs> We've got the full Deutsch marks. Uh, James, did you pick one? But did you say Germany as well, or I said Germany. I wouldn't say five uh, Kit Simons though as a score. I just, I think in previous tournaments, admittedly, um, World Cups give you sort of the uh, the Latin influences from sort of North America. The African kits as well can always sort of stand out and. Puma tend to do a little bit more with the African nations, I think. But yeah, yeah I, I would say the Germany one, and I would say four Kit Simons out of five for me. Four Kit Simons, not still not a bad score. Um, guns in my head, I'm gonna go with the Italy home shirt, that blue. I just, I like to say, massive fan of that blue shirt. Um, yeah, I'd probably go four, four Kit Simons on that one for me as well, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's a really nice, smart. Smart little kit, which I would like to say I would purchase with my own money. I was tempted to get it for the fi- uh if they get to the final, but I'm gonna support the boys now, so I won't be uh <laughs> I won't be buying Italy's shirt. Um but let us know uh, in the comments 
um, on the reviews. What kits you you like in the uh, you've liked in the tournament so far? Um, do you agree with us? Do you think we're talking shit? I don't know. Let us know uh, in the comments. Don't forget also to like and subscribe to Talking Kit. Um, and yeah, they are our first Kit Simons kits. We'll be bringing plenty of Kit Simons. Probably have one every episode, won't we? Um, doing random teams, players, um, whatever, Club. really, countries, clubs, everything. Uh, and just giving our, our scores out of out of five on them. So yeah, Talking Kit, uh, the podcast. Yeah, we're back. So I put a little ticker on the bottom so you can find us uh, where we live. Um, we're pretty much everywhere, aren't we? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, Twitch. Um, just all talking kit. Luckily, no one's had that one before. So um, I get to uh, we get to keep all of them. So yeah, try and find us on there and get involved with with us and what we're about. Um, another little feature that we've got coming up um, on Talking Kit is it's, is it suits you, sir? Isn't it? I like I like this one. Sean seems to really from the episodes we've done so far Sean really takes to this really well I think he goes above and beyond yeah. in in his sort of uh, his his research for it so I, I, that's why I said to you Sean this should be your little feature I think put it on my, put that on my CV do it go for it mate why not um, so sticking to the Euro theme uh, and seeing as they won quite convincingly last night uh, you've chosen your the top five England Euro shirts um, to, to talk through today. Is that correct? Yes. So I'll give you my first one. Should I go from top to bottom? Um, are you, what, are you going from your favourite to worst or from the earliest to the latest? Go from How are you favorites, doing it? Favourite to worst. Your favourites first, yeah? But, yeah. So go on. Talk us through your favourite. So it's the first tournament I really remember properly. It was Euro yeah. 96. That kit is just iconic, and I could wear it now, and it'll be seen as classy. Um, but the, um, there she is. That's the one. Um, Alan Shearer's one-handed celebration. Uh, Teddy Sheringham and Darren Anderton, great players. Um, Stuart Pearce, when he scored that penalty. Yeah. The redemption pen. Um, the font as well nothing- was really good. The, the, the text on the shirt, I seem to recall, was a very nice text. And there's nothing Proper too men- mental about it either. It's just like badge, kit supplier, collar. I've said it before, but Umbro in the nineties were just unreal for kits. They just like yeah, they just got it right time and time again. Mm-hmm. And the England shirts were some of the best that they produced. I think uh, the one, yeah. obviously, the one James is wearing. Um, it's one I had and absolutely loved that shirt. Obviously, it's got a bit, a few bad memories, but. Um, yeah, just a great, a great kit. The light, the light blue works really well for England. You wouldn't expect it on an England shirt, but I think it it works really well uh, on that kit. Um, but I love it. Massive fan of that kit. Nothing bad to say against it, really. You can see Badil and Skinner in it as well, which was <laughs> yeah the best, the best song of the nineties, I reckon. Uh, the whole nineties. That's the best song of the whole decade. If you get yeah. Britpop, you're going straight for Badil and Skinner. And oh, the lightning oh, seeds. That's not the food, the food is two pack, no chance. Lightning seeds and Bedeal and Skinner. That's for me. They couldn't get 90,000 wow. people singing in a stadium. Well, I, I bet they could. Oh, well, they couldn't now because two of them are no. dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, a great kit, Sean. Absolutely great kit. So that's my favorite. Okay. Uh, number two you, is one? number two is. It's the next tournament. It's chronologically this works perfect as well. Euro two thousand, bad tournament for us. Great start. We beat, we beat the Germans. We fucking snatched the fucking defeat from the jaws of victory against Portugal. Should have smashed them. Uh, there it yeah, is. Euro two thousand. Shearer and Owen. Um, Did this have the, beat... the red font on and the, yeah. and, the band, and, the, yeah. and the numbers on the front as well? Horrible yeah. font. I didn't like that font at all. Well, it's no, time to Roman, isn't it? I think. It was, it was, I can it was, picture, uh, skulls in that kit. Number eight. Yeah. yeah. And they had this sort of invisible um, umbro 
down the side. Yeah. I was so when excited. You, when really. you thought I was talking about the 99 kit, James. Yeah, and when you described it to me, it, it was, I didn't picture the Umbro logo. I pictured it just to actually say Umbro. <laughs> when you explained it to me. My bad, my bad. But yeah, nice shirt. I think it works. It works. It work, weirdly, it works as a retro kit. If you saw someone wearing that now, actually, I actually did see someone wearing it. Actually, it was against. I was coming out of my house uh, the other day. Um, I was, what, what game was it? I think it was the. You know, I was in the Czech Republic game. I think I might actually been. No, it was the Germany game. I tell a lie, and a guy was wearing it coming out, and I was wearing the shirt you can see behind me. Um, and he was like, "Oh God, I'm, I'm so nervous." And obviously, at the time, I'd, I'd fully not converted to England, and I was like, "Yeah, oh God, it's all oh, so nerve wracking." Fully thinking, I'm not really bothered, mate. If, if they win, they win. They don't, they don't. But yeah, I think about it, he was wearing that shirt, and it looks really good now as like a retro kit to wear out. Did you um, celebrate when England scored against Germany? I give it a yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I mean, I didn't jump out of my chair. Are out. Oh. But no. is that is that kit the first one where it had, it had the lettering of England above the badge? That's a good shout. I don't, do you know that, Sean? You don't. Don't know that one. I think it could have been quite possibly. Probably. Was that a Sven oh. era as well? Kevin that Keegan. Keegan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Keegan that. Um also as well, one thing. I, I I don't like about England, or not I don't like it, I always find it really odd, is that they, they seem to be embarrassed about winning the World Cup. Because oh, they never that. had the star. And then even now, it, like obviously in the Brazil shirt, it's obviously plain to see that you can see the stars. But even on the shirt at the moment, it's not really there. It's like in silver and you can't really see it against the white. Mm. And I just wonder why they don't sort of celebrate winning the World Cup, whether it's, you know... Mm however many years ago, but so it's just always stood out as odd to me, that really. I'm not too sure why they do it. If we won it again, they'd definitely have two bold ones, I reckon. Yeah, I imagine so. There's another shirt that comes up in a minute, and I, and I want to talk about that subject on that shirt as well, because it was even weirder that they would do what they did on that shirt. But um, yeah, so the Euro 2000 kit, again, not a great tournament. Um, that Figo goal, that reminds me of that kit. That yeah. He scored. Amazing goal. I don't think that goal gets talked about enough. And I think it's an absolute worldie of a goal. It's amazing. Well, it was a, no one went near him. It was like Ryan Giggs against Arsenal. Oh, no yeah, one, but no, from no where he was. Yeah, but no, I don't, no slander against Giggs, his goal, mate. I'm having none of it. <laughs> I'm having none of it. And you weave through your team. David Seaman at that tournament was slow. And he sort of like yeah. fell towards yeah. the ball and he was old. From where he hit the ball, Figo. It was an it was an outstanding goal. Sorry, yeah. So okay, so that's yeah your second kit. Which one? Which one you got next? Well, actually, I'm not going to go rating wise. I'm going to go chronologically. The next one, Euro 2004. Um, I hated that kit. I give it. I give it one lion out of five. Um, Umbro made it, and Umbro then they made some shit merchandise. The balls, the boots, and the kits was like, like straight off the rack at Sports Direct. Have you ever seen them? Like Michael Owen used to wear Umbro boots at that tournament, and they were yeah, like, they were written up, weren't they? Just plain like, black, like a massive diamond. All of it. No, mm. they weren't. They were like red and whatever. Oh, okay. It's like the the red, red and white, or red and silver version. But the kit, I didn't like the kit. Um, so that's that's the kit there, yeah. Yeah, it's just your your two thousand four. So this is the kit. One? Yeah, the, it had the weird like polo shirt thing with a blue stripes down the bottom bottom yeah. half and it had the St George's cross on the crest rather than the three lines on the reverse side yeah um, yeah look, and like you away, bought it from Asda yeah and the away kit was bad the red one yeah so this this is the shirt I want to talk about in regards to the star so I think this is the very first shirt that had a star on it but do you know where the star was because it's not above <laughs> the crest but do you know where the, the star was was this on the was it on the sleeve it was on the bastard sleeve. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Why? Just put it above the crest. It looked great. In, well. It would look great in that little what the red bit above the the crest as well. The star. It would have stood out loads. But yeah, it was it was on one of the sleeves. Really weird. 
Not a great kit. Remind, reminds me of Rooney uh, in that tournament. Yeah, the, the only uh, when... like light in that tournament for me was Rooney. Yeah. Quite, he was like 18, weren't he? I think he would have... If he'd have stayed on. fit, you probably would have won that one, yeah, England. Mm. He was fearless, wasn't he? He was just absolutely fearless. Incredible yeah. player. Point. A and lot, a lot like stars above their crest. They have, yeah, yeah. Two they got on there, um, but yeah, a great. Not again, not a great tournament for me. Not one. It, it Greece was. It was all it, right. for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. Paris Dias, yeah. was it? Scored against yeah. Portugal in the final. Yeah, yeah. I think it, yeah, it was one for kits rather than actual football for me. But yeah, it didn't. Once, I think once your whole nation go out, it kind of just damp squib everywhere in it after that. No one really cares. If they go out early, well, it was a sort of is it quarters or the same. It was a good, yeah, it was a good game. It? I think it was the first, I think it was the only tournament that had the silver goal. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whereas, like, they scored against us in extra time and we would have gone out after the first half, but Frank, Frank Lampard equalised in the first half. Otherwise, a silver goal would have come into play. And, um, that was a weird concept. Yeah, not not great. Um, so there you go. Your third pick was England 2004. Uh, your next um, one, Sean? Uh, Euro 2016. Another really bad kit. Yeah, I'm not... Sky not blue. Bad, like, sky blue on white. and like Light pastels don't really work with a white kit. It's got to be like yeah, royal, royal yeah, blue or a deep red or something. And there we, got it is. By, we got beat by Iceland, which is a game I went to as well in Nice, and it was a shit game. This reminds me. He, he You're a bad charm, really, aren't you, Sean? At these tournaments, <laughs> we, didn't get, we didn't get beat. We didn't get beat by Scotland. So, yeah, two shit games that you've been to. Yeah, so you at the Iceland game. Yeah. Uh, so it was a um, Rooney penalty, was it? That drew us level, and then no, we we took the lead. Up with the Rooney penalty. penalty. After like three minutes in, I was like, "This is going to be easy," and um. <laughs> But I thought we were going to get pissed. We all got, started drinking, but because we were English, and the English 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 had a lot of trouble with the Russians and stuff. They that game they served not point not five percent beer. So, but nobody knew until like we're like eight pints in. And we're like, I'm not even drunk. It was just all in the mind. And we looked at the bottom. It's like alcohol free Carlsberg because they didn't want us getting pissed. Oh, that's sh- shocking. To make it even worse for you, yeah, um, yeah, not 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 a fan of this shirt at all. I think this is one of the, when it went through. Nike went through one of them really shit pe- periods of making really crap kits. Mm. It looks and like a pajama top to, to me. <laughs> yeah, the, the little the little V neck. I mean, at yeah. least the stars present on the shirt, which is good mm. for England. Um, the weird light bluey grey on the sleeves. No, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible shirt. Um, and I say it does remind you of Roy, Hodg- Roy Hodgson, doesn't it? So, mm. even Harry more Kane taking it. corners. Oh, yeah. At least it's not yeah. Phil Jones taking corners. At least your team's not doing that. Uh, so, should we go to your final one then, Sean? It's going to be this year's. It's 2020. I like it. I like the comment before about the, the font and the collar. I could buy it. I don't think you can. I think it's all that everywhere. <laughs> if it was on sale, I could buy it. Unless you, I think I saw it in a small. If you, are, if you, if you can fit into a small, Sean, I could. I can fit in a small. Yeah, easy. Um, oh. And Nike, Nike have done a good, good job. It looks like oh. the Amer- like an American one as well. Quite like the American yeah. football tops. A weird little detail that I like about these shirts because I've seen this shirt up close. So I like, I like the fact the crest in the Nike is in the middle. That's very retro for me. Um, but also at the back of the collar. There's a little V, like a little dip. Yeah, like a little um, nick. Yeah, I, I really like that that detail. I like the the stripes down the side. Like I said, the font is absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of prem teams have that now, don't they? That little nick at the back. Yeah, so I really like that detail from Nike because it's one of the one of the better kits they've made um, for England, definitely. Uh, you know, could be uh, could be deemed a classic if England bring it home. Um, in the final, if they get there, so no, it's, it's some good picks there. I like the fact you've not just gone for ones that that are nice. You've actually gone for some that aren't all that great. Got to mix um, it up. Well, actually, yeah. the kit I'm wearing now, I keep going to the wrong crest. 
Uh, 12 quid from Sainsbury's. I got it in 20, 2016. Not official, I don't... Oh, yeah, it will be official. It was like official merchandise, but for the poor people. <laughs> I don't, Sainsbury's, is quite, Sainsbury's is quite expensive. I don't think poor yeah. people are going to Sainsbury's. It's not Lidl or Aldi. I know, but... I know, but Love Lidl and Aldi, by the way. 12 quid for an England shirt. I can't. I couldn't yeah. afford seventy quid for an England shirt. It's not. Yeah, it's not. The players aren't running out, and it? it's not like an authentic one. Twelve quid for a little t-shirt. It's fine. That's all right. To be, and it doesn't do well in the wash. It's gone really tight. <laughs> no, like, that's what she gains. Like, you've been it in the gym, haven't you? That's all that is. Been to the gym once in my life. That's a lie. I to say. That's a lie. You, didn't you used to have a lie. PT? Oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> did you go? To, not... Did you go to a gym? Did oh, you go yeah, to I a went... gym? Yeah, but I, did, I went to a gym and I had a really good time with the PT, but it's like, oh. I don't. <laughs> that's the gym. I, when someone says go to the gym, it's like working alone that's, and looking yourself in the mirror. And stuff. No, no. Okay, okay, I'll stand corrected. I went to a gym. Yeah, I've been to a gym a lot. Okay. <laughs> James? What's that? Have you been gym? to a gym? Um, once or twice, never again. I'm thinking, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking more once, James. Now, I went, it was with me and it, that was an experience. I've been a couple of times with with Aaron to a gym, but um, yeah. yeah. The best, bit, imagine was your job, the best bit was in the showers, wasn't it, James? Afterwards, it was. Well, it's, I mean, it's just it's not for me. What can I say? No, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone, is it? Um, so, if you had to pick uh, James out of the five shirts, what, what which one's your favourite? I would go for the first one, uh, the Euro '96 home kit. The opposite to this replica that I've got on. Um, like I say, the font and stuff like that. And like Sean said with the memories of it, obviously you've got the the dentist chair with Gaza. Um, you've got the thumping of the Dutch. Um, just a, just a, a really good, sort of quite iconic in England's history, that, that shirt, for the good and the bad reasons. Cool. Uh, I'll go next. I'll leave you to go last, Sean. Um, as much as I do like that 96 one, um, I'm probably going to go this one, yeah, the Euro 2021. Just think it's an overall future classic shirt, Cent- central um, crest and uh, night tick, the font as well, like I said. And I think it's just going to evoke nice memories for everyone. Like I think even the shirt from the the World Cup in 2018. I think you look back at those kits, and it, I think everyone remembers that summer and how good it was. And I think this one will have. Similar feet, similar uh, emotions, and hopefully, like you say, if you, if you get into the final and maybe winning it, uh, it's going to be even better for that shirt. So that'll be my pick: the uh, the England home shirt from uh, this year or this tournament. Sean, you're a ninety-six one. That's number one. Oh, okay. Five five lines out of five. Simple as that. Yeah, sweet. Um, so yeah, let us know in the comments. Uh, or in the review. Uh, let us know what you think. Are we right? Are we talking out of our ass? What's your favourite England shirt? Do we miss one out that you maybe think was better? Um, let us know, like I say, and uh, we'll probably discuss it. It's Talking Kit. Okay, so uh, we're going to finish off. Uh, come up with a nice little game. Uh, I was struggling to think of a name. I don't even know if his name's any good because these two haven't told me if they like it or not. And it was literally something I just pulled out of my ass, really. Um, <clears throat> so the premise of the game, yeah, it's called Shirt Impressions. And what I will do, or one of us will do, um, before each episode, is send another one of the guys free shirts. And what that person has to do is tell us the first player that comes to mind when they see that shirt. Um, and then what we'll do on the episode is we'll ask the other person um, if they can guess who the other person has said um, when they see uh, that shirt. Pretty much shirt impressions. So before the episode, I sent James free shirts. Um, and I'm going to ask Sean to try and guess which player he said first for each shirt. Is that clear? I'm key- uh, yeah, I'm keyed into James's mind as well. I think I'm going to guess. Think? <laughs> Sounds like a good game. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. If it's shit, we won't keep it, obviously. But I'm I'm hopeful. I got my fingers crossed. Um, okay. So let's get the the first shirt up for you. I'm just going to get rid of some crap on here. Uh, okay. So the first shirt I sent to James. 
Do you want Sean want to give his answer first, or do you want me to give mine? No, I want Sean to. Uh, yeah, Sean. Sean needs to try and guess who you said. Yeah, because I've if actually sent my out answers to Aaron, so I'm not yeah. going to so, change. Yeah, I've got. No, I've got. I've got them written down here, so you can't change your mind. Um, do you know what? It's quite. I don't even need to put the picture up, really, do with Sean uh, James. I'm wearing, a, admittedly, a replica. Wearing, yes, you wear. You're wearing the kit now, but for everyone else. So yeah, the first shirt I sent to um, to James was the Euro '96 away, the grey shirt. Um, so Sean, who See now, is the first person or the first player? The first James... person I'm thinking of is <clears throat> the first one that comes to my mind, but I need to think about what James thinks. Who's um, the first one well, that comes to your mind? Alan, Alan, Shearer. Comes to Alan Shearer. Okay. okay. But in my head, I, I'm thinking Gareth Southgate. Is that Absolutely. your answer? But my answer is, that your answer? Is, no, my answer is Alan Shearer. Oh, is it? Yeah. You should have you should have gone with what you thought was in James's oh, head. He said, he said Gareth Southgate. I said Gareth Southgate. Of course, the the villain at the time, or you know, at least yeah. the one that everyone looks back on now and says he's since had his redemption. But yeah, I said Gareth Southgate after that penalty miss. Shearer wow. would never cross never cross my mind in that kit. There's two no. two players I think of. Southgate is the main one, mainly and for Gascoigne. missing the penalty, okay? and Gascoigne because of him missing that chance. In well, that I, think time. Shearer, I think Shearer because of that. Because of that header at the near post in like the sixth minute. That's why. But I should have gone with what I thought. But anyway. Yeah. You, you were nearly there, I guess. Nearly there. Uh, okay. Uh, any any comments on that shirt? I think it's one of the best away shirts England ever had. I did have don't that like shirt. It. Don't like it. Oh, I, I like it. it. I don't think it's the best one ever. I do like it, though. I don't think it's the best. Oh, no. Ever. The best ever. I was just thinking, it's up there. It's one of the best for me. I, I think, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. I think I have an affinity to great kits. I, I love the Manchester United one. Yeah, <coughs> that was around the similar time. Um, so didn't like it, did he? But well, no. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's a great kit. That one, I absolutely love it. Uh, I think I, okay. actually, I actually had that United great kit. Oh, of course oh, you did, because you United, fan, United yeah. fan. Yeah, because you're a massive red. <sighs> I'm not. <laughs> Okay, so moving on. <clears throat> Sorry, my fault's going here. Uh, kit number two um, that I sent to James. Uh, we talked about this tournament. So it was the 2004-2005 Netherlands shirt. Uh, James, big fan of uh, the Netherlands, which is one reason why I sent it to you. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, so great kit. And you wanted to talk about the, the font on this, didn't you, James? You wanted, you yeah, this, some is this kit, this is where um, people can have, have a little look. Because um, I did have a, the player in mind. I just wanted to double check they'd actually worn it. Turns out they had, so it was fine. But the pictures were, obviously this is without the number on, um, but with the number, it would have like a circle, it'd have the circle and the number inside. And it was just quite, it took up a lot of the shirt and it was just quite unusual. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's just a different way I've, of putting them on there. I have to say that is one of my favourite Nike templates of all time. This is the kind of the first time I, I can think of a template like really being focused in a tournament. Like a lot of teams having that template, like obviously United, Arsenal, Barcelona, all the the Nike club teams had it, and then it was also used in the the international tournament and that that same period. Mm. And it, like I said, I don't remember. Maybe Adidas <laughs> in the Euro 2000 had a, a very, a, a very uh, distinctive template. But that Nike one for me stands out as one of the first. And yeah, I, I absolutely love it. I love the where the Nike tick is placed. I love the little swoosh on the on the sleeve. Yeah, it was on the collarbone. The Nike tick wasn't it? It was quite high yeah. compared to usual. And, yeah, badge, badge in the middle. I love, that love the United shirt. Yeah. But I, what I remember is very baggy. It was a very baggy kit. Maybe just very, maybe you were just very skinny at the time, sure. And I always went for baggy went kits for back then kit when back I was then. younger. Well, is that picture of you in that United shirt and it's drowning because, you? It's like you got your dad's on. I used to think short, to think like short, short sleeves. Like short sleeves. <laughs> made you, made you a bit soft. <laughs> I think you, I think it was you who told me that. Don't blame me. Do so, not blame me for that. That's never come out of my mouth. I don't know where you're getting it from. So I used to 
like this now, I wouldn't be seen dead wearing this in 2001. Because <laughs> it, it looked like it made you a bit soft. I don't want to say the word. But. Should it make you anyway. tougher? You just start to sleep, start to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Brace the, the first, elements first, more. First, first, first. The first Dutchman who comes to my mind is Ruud van Nistelrooy, but I think James will be thinking of Giovanni van Bronckhorst. Is that your, is that your final answer? G-O-V-B, yeah. So you, you've got that mix, mix, mixed up, because I think James would say Ruud van Nistelrooy and you would think Giovanni van Bronckhorst. And you've kind of got it wrong because James said Rude Van Nistelrooy. Oh, for yeah. fuck's sake. <laughs> I think I've just walked the dog up. <laughs> oh, of course you have. You've done it again. Um, oh, it's half game. It you went with your other answer and they've done the same. But yeah, Rude Van Nistelrooy oh. for me in that kit. Yeah, definitely. definitely. What, was your, set? what um, was your second choice, James? Possibly Stam. Yep, Stam. Oh. Cocky. Did Stam wear that kit, yeah? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. I might have to check that, but I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. As well. mm. Yeah, David would have. Would David still in the team? He would have been saved off. Jan Jan Venegor of Hesselink. He would have won that as well. Yeah, imagine taking your kids to get his shirt and he wanted that name on. No chance. Back in then, when you paying per, when you were paying per letter as well. No chance. No chance. No chance. <laughs> um, okay, so the final kit. Um, so. We went back back in time a little bit. I brought it uh, a little bit into the future, the present time. Um, so the final kit, I asked um, James to think of a player that first sprung to mind. Is oh, what a kit! The Italy uh, Euro 2020 shirt. Uh, they're wearing that in the, course of the present time. Could be wearing it against England in the final. Um, oh, look at it; it's absolutely beautiful. Great kit. Do you know what I do prefer though? I, I, well. I prefer, do you remember the old badge that Italy used to have in the 90s? It had sort of the weird circle and it's, square. It was like a football, a world, weren't it? it yeah, it was. I, I love that. I remember the night kits they used to have with that. Uh, who scored? When Zola scored against England at uh, Wembley. 1-0. Against, win. against Ian Walker. Kit. Ian Walker was in goal that game. You would know, being the keeper of the three of us. Um, so yeah, so that's the kit. I've asked him to think of a player. I think this is the most difficult of the no, three. No, I think this is easy. I think this is easy. I think this is okay, easy. So okay, so are you going to talk us through your thinking? Um, Cialini. Come on. <laughs> that's what's, the the, what's the thought process behind that? Because he's like, he's the most, apart from Immobile, he's like the most iconic player of, of this tournament. And it's his last one. And I think... Like you were thinking about Stan before, centre half, Chiellini, Chiellini. So who would you have said? Insignia. See, interestingly, I was I nearly said Insignia because watching Italy, he's obviously played a lot of the games quite well for them. But the name I chose, the person I'm thinking of, I think he's been linked to Arsenal, um, Locatelli. He would have been like my eighth choice. Yeah, I, I think when 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 he sent them through, I thought that's a random one. I as think much as a good player, it was one that I would possibly purchase on FIFA saves as well. To be honest, so yeah, another. I like. I used to. I used to when he was at when he was at AC Milan, I used to always buy him on FIFA. Um, so I like the fact that he's because he, he kind of shipped him off, and I like the fact he's sort of built his career back back up and he's uh, getting linked to big like Juventus and Arsenal, like you say. Um, my pick would have been um, Chiesa. I think I think he's a really good player. He's the one that sprung to mind for me. Is that Enrico's kid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He used to play for Parma. Mm. Um, but yeah, so none out of three. Um, I, I, I deserve three, some kudos. I was a little bit close. I was kind of close. I mean, yeah, you were close, but you, I you myself scored out no of points. Points. You scored no points. Um so yeah, so that was shirt impressions. I like that. That's staying for me. I think that's a great, okay. game. Um, great game. So we'll do it another time next time. I don't know if you used to want to send the shirts and we'll guess. Or I don't know. We'll yeah. see whatever. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll do a little Russian roulette or something. Um, so yeah, that was the very first episode of Talking Kit. We are done. Um, did you enjoy it, boys? I loved it. Very good. It's been a long time in the making, so glad that we can oh, get it together. I'm telling you. 
I'm glad we can do it now. Get it out. Um, so if you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. Um, there's an audio version that's going to be up uh, wherever you find podcasts so you can listen to us on the go. Um, like I say, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch. Uh, it's all at Talking Kit. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again very soon. Uh, take it easy. Talking Kit easy.